morning to everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone, uh, wherever you are in the world. I am uh, Ariane from the ISN headquarters, and I'm pleased to welcome you to this webinar focused on our Sister Renal and Transplant Center program. Um, today we have uh, three panelists and a fourth one who should uh, be joining soon. We have uh, Peter Kerr, uh, who is the chair of our, our ISN uh, Sister Renal Center program. We have Paul Harden, who is co-chair of the Sister Transplant Center program, and Paul O'Connell from the Transplantation Society, who should be joining very soon. And then last but not least, we have Vincien, the ISN headquarters coordinator of, um, of the program. So before I uh, give the floor to Peter, who will present an overview of the Sister Transplant Center program, and Vincien, who will go and dive into the practicalities of how to apply, to our program, I just wanted to remind the audience of a couple of household rules. Um, you're all on mute, and this is to, um, to avoid any unpleasant background noise. But of course, you will be able to ask questions. And uh, you can do this through the question box of your uh, panel, of the webinar panel. So don't hesitate to send in your questions. Um, and if they are targeted at a specific person from the panel, you can mention that. And I will relay those questions at the end of the presentations to, uh, to the panel. Um, this webinar will also be recorded, so you will be able to watch it again or share it, uh, should you wish to share it with some colleagues. So without any further ado, I would let Peter present now the uh, objectives and the, the aim of the Sister Renal Center program. Uh, good evening. Uh, uh, and for me, it's good evening. Good morning to those in other parts of the world, uh, whatever time zone you are in. Uh, thanks for joining in uh, and uh, hopefully others who may listen later uh, at, at the, to the recording can also um, make sense of all of this. I'll just uh, make sure I click the right thing. Um, just to remind you, as Ariane mentioned, of the people who are presenting. So I'm the chair of the Sister Rental Centre program. Uh, so I'm going to do most of the talking. Uh, Paul Harden is also online and can uh, contribute. And hopefully Phil will join in also. And Vansian will, will uh, talk about some of the technicalities later on. So. Perhaps uh, this is the agenda we'll, we'll talk about, uh, talking about the programs and then particularly how to prepare a successful application and, and Vincian particularly will uh, run through how to use the website. And as mentioned, we'll have opportunities for questions uh, uh, at the end. So some things that are useful to know about the, the Sister Rental Centre program uh, just, first of all, just the terminology. You'll see down here on my side, I think you can see, hopefully see my mouse. Um, the Sister Renal Centre is often just referred to in the documents as SRC. And there's a coexisting uh, Sister Transplant Centre program which has the abbreviation STC. Then particularly, uh, we use the, the abbreviations EC for the Emerging Centre. So this is the centre in the uh, lower or middle income country who is requesting the training and the supporting centre, the SC, is the centre in the experienced uh, higher income uh, country uh, that is offering the assistance with that training. We also use the term mentoring centre and trios, meaning that when an emerging centre has graduated through the program, over a period of six years usually, uh, they then can join with the original uh, supporting centre to act as a supporting centre themselves for a new emerging centre. So that the trio, meaning the three centres then, work together particularly to help a new emerging centre. The concept here is that the original emerging centre has gained experience and some momentum and is now able to help uh, other people in their own region, usually in their own country. So the point of the uh, Sister Renal Centre program really is to build partnerships uh, and as outlined on the slide, partnerships of excellence in particular. So w we aim to link renal centres in the emerging countries with, with supporting centres uh, in the developed world 
so that the expertise can be shared between those two centres. Uh, and this nurtures partnerships between those centres, not only in terms of supplying some funding for some educational uh, activities, but uh, improving interactions uh, between the centres, providing educational benefits and follow up and, and support. And this support could be in lots of areas, including even just discussion of clinical cases and things of that nature. But the ultimate goal is to create local centres of excellence in the, under, in the previously less well-developed centres uh, and to build them up and enhance the nephrology in those uh, geographical areas. So it's, it's really a capacity building uh, program. I mentioned also there's a coexistent transplant centre program, the ISN TTS Sister Transplant Centre program. So what's happened in this regard is that uh, the ISN has joined forces with the Transplantation Society to uh, operate this program. Uh, there's always been a, quite a lot of applications to the Sister Renal Centre program for transplant activities. And it makes sense to use the strengths of the Transplant Society uh, to build this uh, into a, a, a partner program. Uh, and, and obviously the, the intent is that to be transplant focused uh, with the development of transplantation in the uh, lower and middle income countries. So how does the program work? Uh, it runs over a, a six year pro program typically. So the people enter the program at uh, on the left hand side of the page at sea level uh, where we allocate a small amount of money, uh, 1500 US dollars per year, uh, to help build up those relationships. But it's probably fair to say that most of the activity occurs at B level and A level. And you can see on the slide, uh, the, the dollar allocations to B level are 12,000 US dollars per year and A level $15,000. Uh, and as mentioned, on the right hand side of the page, the graduated centres can form these TRIO programs that I was talking about. It's fair to say that the program has become quite competitive as the number of applications uh, increase over time. Uh, and so we like to try and select you know, promising, sustainable partnerships. Uh, and we like to have a view to these partnerships developing over the time. Uh, the, the applications to the program start at level C and we require uh, new applications, if you like, uh, although they're built on the, the, what's happened before, to progress from C level to B level and from B level to A level. And in that process, we assess whether there has been progress uh, in that time and whether some of the objectives have been met. Uh, Unfortunately, with money being tight these days, we can't uh, just let everyone progress if they haven't shown some degree of uh, uh, advancement in their activities. Uh, and that includes reporting on their expenditure, of course. So this slide shows you what's happening at the moment. So this is in the uh, ISN Sister Rental Centre program. You can see uh, that, uh, and uh, it, this, Sister Rental Centre Program, sorry, is in blue and the Sister Transplant Centres, the STC ones are in orange. Uh, and you can see a total of 28 uh, level C uh, uh, pairs, uh, a total of 23 pairs at level B and 14 pairs at level A. Uh, and there's some recent graduated pairs. So in all, there's 65 uh, uh, pairs on trios that are active at the moment and 13 of them are focused on transplantation. So uh, there's been 32 pairs graduated since 2009. Uh, and of course, th that's always happening. There's e every uh, uh, year or so, there's graduations from the program. So what we see is the benefits to the program. There's, there's obviously dollars involved, and, and we had the dollars on those um, on the earlier slide. Right? Uh, it adds up to a total of 57,000 US dollars over the six years. 
So that's a, a reasonable amount of money, uh, along with those financial benefits, uh, you know, to the journals, to uh, Kidney International, Kidney International Supplements, and Kidney International Reports. Uh, there's, there's, there's a little bit of noise coming through, or someone, I'm not sure whether someone could be muted or not. Um, uh, thank you. Uh, and uh, also includes is five passes for the ISN Academy, uh, which is shared between the two centres, and priority access to other ISN programs. And by that we mean that all of these other programs are also competitive, uh, but, uh, and in the scoring for those applications, there are bonus points given if you're already in one of the other programs, and Sister Renal Centre program is included in that. So if you're in a sister renal centre program and you're applying, for instance, uh, to the CME program or the fellowship program, there's, there's bonus points uh, in the application that are given to those members. Uh, there's also a uh, priority given for travel grants to the World Congress and the ISN Frontiers meetings. Uh, and there's, at the graduation end of the program, uh, the graduating pairs compete for the ISN Schreier Award, which is a, a, a monetary award for the best um, graduated pair each time the World Congress is held. Um, now, there, there are a couple of cautions around uh, the use of the, of the benefits. Uh, it's not intended that the money is going to uh, be the sole source of uh, activities between the units. It really is a framework for the centres uh, to build uh, on the existing goodwill between them uh, and to reinforce that. It's certainly hoped from ISN's perspective that uh, pairings will look to other sources of money as well, whether they be competitive or otherwise, and that they'll also look to build long-lasting and fruitful collaborations. And, and as an example, uh, I had assisted at Bengal Centre with uh, Jakarta in Indonesia, which started more than 15 or 18 years ago, and, and we still interact. And, and I think that that sort of long-lasting uh, relationship is important in these activities. Uh, the other thing is important to say that the funds really can only be used for educational activities. Um, we can't use them, uh, we can't be seen to be using these funds for uh, any private benefit the institution and, and they can't be used for the uh, provision of routine clinical care. Uh, we also think that for, for the most part they can't be used for buying uh, individual large items of equipment. Uh, and most you know, obviously there are there are potential lots of expenses involved in establishing uh, nephrology activities uh, in some centres, particularly when there's not much of a base. And, you know, it's not ISN or or TTS's uh, intention that this sort of money is the sole support for that. Uh, it's it's helpful money. Uh, it's particularly aimed at education and shouldn't form the sole basis of uh, your plans. So, so what, are the, what does a successful application look like? What sort of things are we looking for in the, in the application to make it uh, have a higher chance of success? So first of all, it, it's worth pointing out what uh, a, a sort of absolute requirements. The emerging centre must be from a low or middle income country. Uh, and, and if there's dispute about that, there is a list of World Bank economies that we can rely on. But usually that's not too much of an issue. Uh, in terms of this, for the Sister Renal Centre program, both centres, so the emerging centre and the supporting centre, should have at least one full ISN member. Uh, and it should be preferably the person identified as the liaison officer for those uh, two entities. Um, in many of the lower and middle income countries, 
there are uh, novel approaches to membership such as group memberships which help with that uh, in terms of the cost of being a member and in a similar way the, the sister transplant center uh, requires uh, members to be or, or, or participants to be either an ISN member or a TTS member uh, preferably obviously it would be nice to to be both um, the application form has uh, uh, sections that require descriptions of the needs of the emerging centre in particular the objectives of the pairing and some and a request now for measurable outcomes. So we want to have something that you can suggest to us that you're going to do and achieve through the pairing that can be measured. And it may be something simple like, we're going to establish peritoneal dialysis, so a measurable outcome might be how many patients have actually started peritoneal dialysis. Uh, there's some more uh, details required in terms of an action plan. And there's some uh, requests for a budget proposal. Um, so again, I reinforce that this uh, is not intended in terms of budget that uh, the money be used for equipment, certainly not for salaries, has been another uh, bone of contention, uh, or dialysis consumables as an example, or other or similar consumables. Uh, and the other uh, indication that, that we have added in recent times is that no more than 10% that the budget can be used to attend conferences and events such as the World Congress or ASM. Uh, that's, that 10% may be a little bit tricky in terms of the uh, level C ones, but certainly for level B and A, that's very much uh, adhered to. So, and the types of activities that you might um, uh, put up are Obviously, the, the visits between centres uh, are a prominent feature in most people's applications. So that may be people from the emerging centre going to the uh, experienced centre to gain uh, ex uh, experience, hands-on experience preferably, uh, a, 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 the capacity to see how things are done in, in the developed uh, unit. Um, and similarly, visits from the uh, supporting centre to the emerging centre for educational activities. And those sorts of activities might be uh, local or regional uh, CMEs, continuing medical education uh, seminars, um, provision of actual educational materials, whether it be uh, books, journals, uh, videos, or, or other digital uh, educational equipment, uh, so, or not so much equipment, but material, educational material. Uh, attendance at training courses themselves, establishment of programs is very common. So establishment, of, for instance, peritoneal dialysis, acute uh, kidney injury management, transplantation. Uh, other procedural things like insertion of tank offs, uh, insertion of lines, renal biopsy. Um, there may also be components of community orientation, including uh, donor awareness, um, uh, community uh, awareness of uh, CKD uh, and other sorts of research activities, um, regional meetings, national and international meetings and publications, and World Kidney Day activities are also uh, uh, included. Um, we do uh, like to uh, to think that uh, there's. Uh, uh, greater use of intra-regional partnerships, um, mainly because this uh, optimises uh, the cost benefits of the program. If if uh, the centres aren't a long way apart, that can be uh, that can save money on travel between uh, the, the two centres, uh, and it may there are also uh, implications in terms of language often. Um, and similar resource settings so people, settings so people understand uh, the, the circumstances better. There are some regional partnerships as well. It's worth pointing out the Asian Pacific Society of Nephrology, the Australian and New Zealand Society of Nephrology and the Indian Society of Nephrology have uh, understandings with ISN to assist with these programs and do financially contribute to them. Uh, so there, there are some joint partnerships with those societies.
The other thing to say is that the ICN has set up uh, over a period of time some regional training centres, uh, and these are centres that have that are well experienced in these types of activities, uh, and have had uh, quite some experience over time of. Uh, for instance, sister renal centre activities, they can assist uh, as possible supporting centres or in identifying supporting centres. So often we have people apply to us or, or make inquiries from potential emerging centres uh, asking for help in finding a supporting centre. And these regional training centres may be a first port of call for that, but the ISN, uh generally speaking, uh, and the Sister Renal Centre Program, myself and the other panellists can often help with that as well. In evaluating the applications, we do look at uh, the needs of the emerging centre and particularly the potential to address those needs with the collaboration of the supporting centre. So. Uh, if the needs of the emerging centre, for instance, are the development of peritoneal dialysis, it, it doesn't make sense to have a supporting centre that has little experience in peritoneal dialysis. Uh, but on the other hand, it makes perfect sense uh, if that supporting centre is well experienced in peritoneal dialysis. And so the, the, the needs uh, analysis and the ability to address those needs need to be considered in choosing a centre. Uh, of course, it also needs to be a willingness to participate and, and actively co collaborate uh, with these uh, pairings. Everyone's meant to benefit from this, and particularly, of course, the emerging centre's meant to benefit, and that benefit doesn't happen if people uh, don't uh, get active with the program. Um, we, we do also, in evaluating particularly progress from C to B and B to A, uh, what planned, what visits were planned and what projects were planned and whether those have started to happen uh, and they're in process. Um, we also like to see uh, participation in other ISN programs and of course we mentioned about the geographical distance between the centres as being of some importance as well. Um, one other thing, because of the uh, tightness of money now and the number of applications we're getting, it's probably fair to say that uh, we're less likely to support centres who are in actually relatively well-developed centres, even though uh, their country as a whole may be listed as a lower or middle income country. Uh, and I, I don't mean to pick on this, but as an example, uh, in India or in China, for that matter, there are a wide variety of uh, centres at different levels of development, uh, depending on what part of the country they're in. If it's from a well-developed uh, centre in those countries, it's probably less likely to be awarded a, a, a pairing. When preparing your application, as as I mentioned, it's, it's good to think about what measurables, uh, and I mentioned the example of the peritoneal dialysis and it's here on this slide. So you may uh, put up the example of the number of uh, transplants you may want, to, you, you intend uh, doing it. Or if you're starting from a zero base, you may say, we'll be very happy just to achieve uh, one or two transplants. And that may be a, a very good outcome if, there's, if it's coming off a zero base. Um, we, we just want to get some feel that uh, you intend to do uh, a task and that that task is being uh, uh, achieved. Um, I've, I made this slide of saying the biggest mistakes and, and, and this is, these are just examples, of, this is just a, a very crude example of uh, what we sometimes see, you know, we, it's often you know, Dr. X will come from America and update us on in nephrology. And that's very unsatisfactory. It doesn't give us any details and it doesn't tell us exactly what's going to happen uh, and what's going to be achieved out of this. It, it's better my, to say that uh, Dr. Y is an expert on PD and, and he's, he or she is going to come and establish our PD program by get, providing us with lots of education, teaching us about catheter insertion, 
and establishing a peritonitis treatment regimen. You can see that gives us a lot more detail and a lot better understanding of what's going to happen. And it also gives us an understanding of what, what can be measured as an outcome. So think about that in, in preparing your uh, application. Obviously, that's just an example. You don't have to do peritoneal dialysis at all. Uh, that's just uh, an example of how to word things. Uh, in thinking about the budget, be realistic. Obviously, at level C, the budget allocation is relatively small, um, and then it builds up with time. But it's still not going to do everything for you. Uh, we we ask you to think about uh, supplementing it uh, where possible. Uh, and especially one of the things we uh, we like to see uh, is when someone come, visits one centre or the other, whether it's from the emerging centre to the supporting centre or, or, or the reverse, the uh, sister renal centre grant can be used for the airfare, but we like to think that the local centre should uh, try to cover the ground costs, the accommodation, the meals. And uh, as I've said before, we won't cover equipment capital costs, salaries, and recurrent consumable costs. Small, for instance, in demonstrating how to insert a tank off, then it's probably reasonable for us to con consider covering uh, consumables around that. But then the recurrent consumable costs of putting in tank offs after that could not be uh, covered by the program. I'll just reinforce also that the primary role of the program is to support education. It's not primarily to support research. Uh, it's true that some uh, limited research is part of many applications, and that's okay as long as it's not a major focus of, of the application. Uh, and I think it's also fair to say that basic laboratory research will not be supported at all. Uh, we've, there are other programs within ISN to support uh, research, uh, and given the pressures on the program, uh, we've had to uh, make a decision not to support basic research as part of this program. That's probably disappointing to some people, but I think in a fairness uh, to all, we've had to adopt that approach. So just to remind you of the timelines, as I'm, I think I'm about to hand over to Vincian to run through how to use the uh, website. The um, applications for the program open in July and there's an, a 1st of October deadline for the applications. Um, we like to think we're strict on that deadline. Probably in reality, we've, we give a little bit of leeway of one or two days. Uh, and then there's the the uh, committee within the ISN. Uh, there's a there's an ISN sister renal centre program, and similarly a, a, a ISN TTS um, program committee review the applications. We score the applications uh, and uh, have a consensus on who should be funded, and then the funding announcement is. Um, is available by January. Often earlier uh, depends. Um, for example, this year with, with the meetings are often at, at the American meeting, and the American meeting is relatively early this year, so we won't have a chance to uh, finish the scoring uh, at ASN, and it'll be later than that. But uh, I'd reinforce to those listening that uh, the deadline for applications uh, is the 1st of October. And uh, the websites are there on the uh, slide. Um, they're with, they're uh, uh, available through the ISN general website, the ISN.org, but you can see that there's a specific uh, program website listed on this slide. Um, and there's also uh, an email address you can use for questions. So I'll hand over to uh, Vansian at this stage and we'll keep the questions uh, for the end. Um, now, I think, what I, do I need to hand over my slides to you, Vansian? Yes, ah, you've done it. Well done. That's it. We're done. Good.
Francienne, you have to forget to not to forget to unmute yourself. Perfect. Um, so, uh, as Peter Pierre just mentioned, there is there are specific sites to apply. So, for the ISN SRC program, you see that the address is src.disn.org, and that you can also access this site through the ISN general website by clicking on programs, how to apply, Sister Renal Center or ISN TTS Sister Transplant Center. For the ISN TTS Sister Transplant Center program, there is another specific address, stc.disn.org, and this site is also available from the ISN website, but also from the new TTS website. These sites are currently being um, renewed, so we are working on new applications for and improving the website. So if you currently go on this website, you will see that the applications are not open yet. We plan to uh, open them at the end of the month of July, at the latest early August. So when you log in on one of these sites, you will see that you have the possibility to sign in with an email and with your password if you already have one. If not, you can create an account by clicking on sign up. When you click on sign up, you will be asked to fill in usual uh, contact information, first name, last name, email, create your password and create your account. Once you have created your account, you will have to confirm the, that the email address is correct by uh, clicking on the email you will have received. If you don't see it in your mailbox, it might be in your spam mailbox. So please check once you confirm on that email that, you, uh, that the email address is correct, you will be able to enter the website. So this is the screen you will see when you are uh, on the website. You, you see here the sorry, you will see here the below application that you are applying for new application. This is when you log in for the first time. After two years, when you open this website, you will see that you apply for an upgrade to level B or an upgrade to level A uh, even further. You see then in the status column that your application is in progress. So if you want to edit it and make it complete, well, click on edit. This is the next screen you will see. The, the screen might uh, be a little bit different when you will see it online because it is still a working version, but it should look more or less uh, like this. So in the left column, you have all the tasks that need to be completed before being able to submit the application. You see the status of, your, uh, of these tasks. You see that for the moment they are all incomplete, but you might have some completed at a certain time and some incomplete. Of course, you can uh, leave your application for a few days and come back later. You don't have to do it all at once. And once you want to continue the application or to start the, the uh, task, you just click on the button on the right of the task. So let's see here what happens if we click on add centralize an officer to application. You click on start and you have the following screen where we ask you to fill in uh, liaison officer. So the idea is to have one contact person for each center at least to uh, that can access the application and that can uh, fill it in and review it. Of course, you can add more people to it so that you can work with several on the same application or at least uh, review it. So once you have fill in the next, sorry. Uh, sorry. When you have fill in the contact information, you just submit and this person will then receive a mail in her mailbox and uh, to uh, validate the, the access. Once you have added a uh, centralized an officer, you can uh, fill in the application for or activity and budget planning for the coming two years. You follow the same logic. You click on start or on continue on the right of the task. You will then find some uh, forms with the detailed questions. I think this is quite straightforward. So for the application form, we will be, you will be asked to find to provide some information on the emerging center and the supporting center, possibly also to the mentoring center if you are forming a trio. You will be asked, as Peter Clare mentioned, to uh, tell us what is your long-term objective, so for the six years in the program, and what are the measurable outcomes for it. 
And also, your concrete objectives for the coming two years in order to achieve this long term objective, what are you going to do for the coming two years? And we also ask you to give a paragraph on your motivations to be part of the program. The activity and budget. Uh, Planning is uh, more about the concrete activities you will do, so which are the visits from the emerging center to the supporting center and or from the supporting center to the emerging center. We will ask you some details about this visit, how much you uh, estimate the cost of those, also what are the projects you plan to do and um, the budget related to it. So once you have filled in all this uh, information, you will see that the progress bar at the right, in the right column should be 100% completed. And in that case, on the bottom left of your screen, you will be able to submit your application. Please, this is very important. Don't forget to submit your application. It happens that people fill in all the tasks, but don't submit the application. In that case, we can, cannot see that you have uh, filled in all your uh, tasks. So we will not consider your application if we don't receive it. So this is um, important. Also, uh, I want to remind you, if you have any question when you are filling in the forms or when you uh, um, some technical questions or some questions you don't know how to fill it in, if it happens, don't hesitate to use the emails that were um, mentioned at the last slide of Peter Care. So stc at disn.org or src at disn.org. I will be very happy to answer your questions um, that I receive by email. So now Thank it's time for questions and answers. Thank you very much, Vincian and Peter, for your presentation. It is indeed time for questions and answers. Um, if you, I haven't received any questions uh, at the moment from the audience, so feel free to uh, send in your questions through the, the question box. And as we're not too many attendees, um, I can also unmute you uh, if you want to ask a question live. Uh, you just have to uh, click on the raise your hand button <laughs> and um, and then I, I will be able to unmute you. Just just what they're thinking, uh, Ariane. Um, Vancy, on the, on the uh, liaison officers one, on that, uh, on that side, um, it's possible to keep adding extra officers by the look of things. Is that correct? So you can add one after you submit you can go and add, an, add another one? Exactly, you can add several. And some people can have the edit uh, option and some people can be added just as read only, if you prefer. If you just right. want them to be able to read what you are filling in or if you allow them to change what you have filled in. Oh, I see, got you. Yep. The, the minimum should be to have one in each center. Yes. Okay, thank you. We do have a, a hand raised from Ernestina Gbogbor. I will unmute you, Ernestina. So if you want to ask your question. Yes, hello, good, good, good afternoon. Um, please, I'd like to know, is it open, only open to renal units, renal dialysis units, or let's say nutrition department affiliated with renal units can apply for the for the sister um, fellowship? I, I suppose the answer to that really is um, w we do have a stipulation that someone at the emerging centre uh, should be a member of ISN. So so that's where, I, I, you know, if someone's got nephrology ties through uh, membership of the ISN, uh, then, then it's possible to construct an application around that. So I, I am a member of the ISN, but I'm a, just an academy member. I'm a, I'm a dietitian. Right. Um, that's yes. okay. That's okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ernestina. I will mute you again. And I have a question here from uh, Simple Kakar, who's asking. Uh, if TRIO applications are separate applications. I think um, yeah. what you probably mean is that whether TRIO applications have a separate uh, application system or if it's included in the general application. Vincian, do you want to answer that? 
Well, actually, a trio application can only happen when you already graduated from a pair. So once you are a graduated pair, you can apply for a trio application using the same uh, site. But then, as you are a graduated pair, you will have the possibility to apply for a trio. It is not available for new applications, but it's through the same uh, to the same site and using the same forms. So the forms will be adapted to include the mentoring uh, information. Yeah. Does that answer the question? Yes, I think so. Yeah, that's. Uh, let me know, uh, simple, if this is okay for you, or if you have additional questions. Uh, I had one for uh, from Chimezi Okwunu. Uh, well, I was asking whether the focal person in the emerging center can be an ISN trainee. Um, and I think, I, uh, but yeah, I can, perhaps I can answer that. ISN trainee, I mean, I, I think it's um, um, a category of, of ISN membership where um, um, it, it's a free membership. Uh, to, to my knowledge, yes, because they are full members of ISN. Yes, that's my understanding too. So let me know if we answered your uh, your question, Chimezi. I have a, a hand raised from Emmanuel Effa. So Emmanuel, I will unmute you. Hi, thanks, Vincien. Um, just one quick question. Uh, can the, uh, is the ISN able to recommend um, centers from um, you know, more established places to uh, be the pair for uh, an upcoming sister renal center from a developing country? Absolutely. So, it, it, I mean, many of the applications we receive, people already have some perhaps pre-existing, sometimes loose associations with centres, but obviously many don't. And, uh, and and it's sometimes hard for, you know, in, in that circumstance for you to find someone to pair with. Um, we um, have uh, several ways of approaching it. We obviously have quite a few contacts uh, and there's quite a few centres who are, who are looking for centres to, to support. And in particular, those regional training centres um, are a good place to start. Um, so, but yes, we can help with that. Short answer. Yeah, I asked that. I, yeah, I asked that because you know I completed an ISN fellowship a couple of years ago, and um, so I wanted to apply for a sister renal centre. Uh, however, my training institution already had about two or three other centers uh, you know as part of their sister renal center program i mean they had two three other centers were mentoring so they couldn't take accept to take me on right. um, and so yeah so that's why i asked that question just to be sure that to be sure that um, you know isn can assist with that linkage yeah happy to help All right, thank you thank you so i will unmute mute you again and i have a hand raised from elena lechvenko so elena i will unmute you right now so you can ask your question now perfect thank you very much um we are listening together with uh, pepe ecolo from congo and we have uh, two questions one question is we didn't understand very well whether uh, uh, only the representative from the supporting center should be the ism member or both from the supporting and their emerging uh, center so that's one question, and uh, the second question is: um, We have already ISN sister center with Moscow. Uh, is it a problem to apply with a sister center program in Congo because it's a completely different center and different program? Um, Bensian or Ariane, do you want to in just in terms of the rules? Did you want to say anything about the? Uh, members, my understanding is that there's meant to be an ISN member at both ends. Exactly. There should be one member in each centre. For the okay. and for the Lisbon centre, it's one member of ISN or TTS in one of each centre. Yeah. Um, in terms of, um, if you like, doubling up on um, 
uh, sister centre arrangements. You mentioned you already had one with Moscow, but uh, going th there have been examples of people with um, more than one sister centre uh, association. I suppose it, it, it may depend on what the competition is like in any given year. Uh, if we if we have a lot of applicants, we're probably less likely to support a doubling up like that. Um, but it would depend on what the activity is like. We, we accept that there may well be a lot of value still in, in that sort of doubling up in, uh, for both parties. So, so it really depends on what the competition is, is looking like. Okay. I think that's... That just, I'm just thinking in terms of trying to be fair to everyone, that's all. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Elena. Uh, I have a couple of other questions um, from, um, from Simple Kakar again. Will the application be considered in the three centers um, if the trio, well, for a trio program if they're all from different countries? Um, poss quite possibly, um, particularly if um, the, the few of the countries are closely associated. Uh, for argument's sake, uh, let's pick an example of, say, a country in Africa being associated with, uh, with say, a centre in the UK, uh, and they've graduated, and then a nearby country in Africa is, is becomes the new emerging centre, and particularly if they're if there's similarities in, in how they go about things, how they do things, um, and what their structures are like, it may well be quite sensible to do that. So it would need to be considered on the basis of the exact circumstances, I suppose. Okay, this would be a first time uh, example, I think. Yeah, I, 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 you know, it's, it, it, I, I suppose my answer is partly it depends. Mm -hmm. It depends on the exact circumstances. Yeah. So I have another question here from Chimedzi Ogunu. Um, my institution has an MOU with the uh, University of Toledo Medical Center, Ohio, in the US. So far, we have performed four tr kidney transplants with the help of the center. Can we go ahead and apply to make an uh, ISN TTS uh, pair if there is already support, I guess? Yeah. yeah. Just because you've already initiated some activities doesn't prohibit you from developing them further. So I think that's that's perfect reason, and, and indeed that may be a good thing because it's shown that you can work together already. Um, I think uh, Paul, I've uh, you wanted to mention something about the trio uh, applications in three countries. You may may have had some experience with that uh, in the past. Oh hi, hello everybody. I just wanted to say that actually it's not a precedent because we had a trio sister link between the UK, Belarus, and Russia about six or seven years ago, and there have been a couple of other examples over the years actually. And the tendency in the past being to adopt a regional approach so that, for example, the reason for that link was the common Russian language. Um, and it's likely that there'll be other links that exist between, another example is Ghent, Lithuania and Belarus, where there is a trio. So um, it does, it, it is possible to do that. That's, that's good. That's terrific. Thanks. Thank you, Paul. Um, I think we have another question from Elena. I will unmute you again. Uh, we actually already um, asked the question. Eh? So this, it's, uh, we had the term, yeah, that's okay. It's answered already, thank you. Ah, okay, sorry. I, I forgot to uh, raise the, the hand. Sorry, that's fine. So I think I have um, addressed all the questions I received. So this is now your last opportunity to ask a question uh, for the audience, if you have any. And uh, if not, you can always contact Vincien, uh, our SRC coordinator, if you have some practical issues or questions that you want to, um, to address. Silence is golden. Yes, so I see <laughs> that we have um, 
yeah, we don't have any questions anymore. So I think we could probably close this um, this webinar. Um, I mean, I suppose just before we do, Paul, particularly with your experience and, and also thinking on the TTS side, is there anything you wanted to add? I think the only one thing I would add is, and I don't know whether Phil is there as well, the, the, there are many countries where somebody cannot get surgical expertise or cannot practice, one can just be an observer, which is a problem if you're visiting and sharing that experience between centres. So yep. to give you an example of this, we are contemplating applying, and I'm not saying that this is uh, the, the present possible, um, with a joint application with Cape Town with another centre in Africa, purely so that um, surgical experience or practical expertise could be undertaken by the African centre in Cape Town, but can't in Europe or in the USA. So it may be that in the future, there perhaps does need to be some sort of partnership between the um, the, uh, the supporting centres in transplantation to allow practical experience to occur. It's an increasing problem which we're, we're facing. Yeah, agree. I'm not sure whether Phil did make it online. Do we know if he's online now? Or no, no, I don't think he made it. Um, right. but that's okay. Okay. So I think we can uh, okay. we can close the webinar. I just want to thank you, um, Vincian, Peter, and Paul for your time and all the attendees. Um, and uh, so uh, as a reminder, this session has been recorded, so we will be able to access the recording. Would you want to share it with some colleagues? And don't hesitate to uh, to ask questions if you do have uh, after this webinar. So we hope we'll have many new applications in October. Excellent. Thank you very much. And see you at our next Thanks webinar. everyone for joining in. Bye. 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 Thank you.